welcome back to the channel. Time to go. I'm trying to leave by four. Took me a minute to get everything packed up, but we got a long road today. So it's the first morning I've come out here and it's actually chilly. It's not like sweating hot. Uh, so they were super kind to me, let me park my bike right in front of the entry. I'm gonna put my liner in my jacket. Woo! -hoo! Celebration. <laughs> All right. What I did to save time was I used ah, I used my small pack. I got all my dirty work uniforms in this. One of these days, I'm gonna go on a trip around to bring so much junk. Because I know a lot of you guys that watch this channel are probably like, man, he's got way too much stuff. I know I do. Uh, camping, you gotta bring, obviously, stuff for the camping side. But when you're doing when you're working, and I do fire training, you've gotta have a bunch of stuff with you too, which is a pain in the butt. It's gonna be a good day. Just gonna send it. I like these uh, Kriga, I think is how you say it, packs, they work good. You can put stuff in, they're dry, they don't leak, they're rugged, and this is a perfect backrest when you're riding. It's perfect. It is It is a little bit on the nippy side out here right now, which is cool. I get it. Cool. All right. Looks like we have uh, a seven-hour journey right at the moment with no traffic, which you know how that goes. Oh, look at this. I just found another one. There you go. Come on, Lick. You got it. They were nice to let me park right next to the building here. 490 miles. So here we are. We're on the highway. What do we got going on? We got a long day yesterday. And today we're starting pretty early as well. I got to do some calculations later to see if I actually made the iron butt challenge happen because we rode a long ways yesterday but we are about 250 miles short of a thousand miles in one stop so we're gonna have to see if we if we were able to overlap that 24-hour period from 4 30 a.m. to 4 30 a.m. I don't know if we I don't know if we'll be able to or not I I think so because the day before we were up early too riding we'll see I'm gonna I'm gonna do the calculations when I get back but anyways meanwhile we're back on the bike we're on the New York Thruway I want to be super careful not to hit any deer because there's a ton of deer in New York but we have uh, about 500 miles to do today telling us it's gonna take us about seven hours to get back to Maine and it is chilly it's 45 degrees so it's almost 50 degrees colder this morning than it was uh, two days ago when I was leaving the Key West <laughs> crazy crazy temperature difference let's get it on getting gas because I'm almost out I could probably go a ways but then I have to get off the highway but my shield is so dirty with bugs I cannot see what I'm doing so I am going to clean it and wait just like 10 minutes and then the Sun will be up I just there's so many deer carcasses on the road you know what I mean it's like even it hitting a deer carcass is not good because they're squishy. <laughs> I cracked myself up. What a better way to start the day than Burger King. It's like, good morning, and you're about to have raging diarrhea. 
Dunkin' Donuts. I'm trying to figure out which way to go. I was looking at the phone, and if I go... The way that I'm currently going is 6 hours and 24 minutes, and it's 376 miles, which basically you take the Mass... The New York Thruway all the way across. You do cross over to Massachusetts a little bit? No. Actually, it looks like you go right into Vermont. I think I've gone this way before. You do go into you do go into Maine, uh, Mass. Matt, Mohawk. Uh, I don't know any of these places. I see Mohawk, and Mohawk I thought was in New Hampshire. Ah, Massachusetts. No, I actually I think that is in New York. So it looks like you stay on 90 all the way to the end, and then. It goes into Vermont, Chesterfield. So that's kind of actually the way we came. And then um, it goes through Atrium, Keene, Concord, uh, Barnstead into Maine. So I, I think that's the way I'm going to go. It's uh, 60 miles less. 20 mi 20 minutes longer right now with traffic. It's a better it's it's a nice road. I mean it's it's not the highway the whole time. The issue with the other one the other way is that it would take me through the Mass Pike and I would go up through like Worcester and I would go up through like Andover, Massachusetts, Haverhill and kind of skirt Boston, and uh, I will hit traffic. It won't be until mid-morning, uh, at least until I would be over there anyways, but it's still always a cluster in there. And then uh, you're on the highway the whole time. So I think I'm going to stick to the route that I'm on. That looks like the best one. Now, I've, I'm, I'm looking here, and I'm trying to figure out, did I do a thousand miles yesterday it's got to be really really close and i'm probably gonna have to look at my map at home to quite figure that one out well let's just see let's just see shall we we were in so conagree conagree con conagree no hungary hungary welcome to the channel where i mispronounce everything that i talk about Congre national park how am i only 13 hours away from that oh because i went over and up that's what it is oh that's why i was in west virginia so long too because it went way up there that is 893 miles so that means i would have been 107 miles away from making the challenge which this morning i've already driven almost 100 miles let's just take a look here and all the way up there. I didn't make a thousand miles. Close. But like, man, I was close. I did like 950 miles, but I don't. I didn't. I didn't crack the a thousand. Oh well, my butt's not iron yet. <laughs> All right, let's get going. I want my Cheetos. Here's something that's interesting. A lot of these stores now are doing self checkouts. Wild, huh? Hey, my bike's still here. No one stole it. Woohoo! And the sun is coming up. So now it's a little bit safer to ride. Did it change it? It did, it changed it. <laughs> it changed it. Now it wants me to go through the 95 way. I don't wanna do that. I got my Bluetooth on in my headset and uh, when it changes it, it goes like <laughs> And uh, so that's why, I, that's why I just double checked it. It's like I said, this is only a couple of minutes longer, but I think it's a way better we better root. My thumb has been numb, and I think it's just from the vibration. I've never experienced that before. I also got these gloves. I have both of these gloves. Thank you, Florida Park Ranger. Ready, one, two, three. Oh, uh, that was even awful, more awful. Uh, uh. There we go. It's not the age, it's the mileage, people. Let's make some time. Get it on. Oh yeah, much better. Much safer.
just on the Vermont New York border stopped quick for some gas and a coffee Stewart shops <laughs> when I used to live in New York were kind of a staple they essentially are like a gas station convenience store if you will with a twist they make their own ice cream and their ice cream is really good and they have like a ton of flavors and it's super cheap and you can get milkshakes and everything else but this is right outside of Beddington Vermont it's right on the the line I think there's one more that's nice that's been open I think there's one more of these as you get old get closer to Vermont this is it that should be the last stop that I have to make before getting home if my mileage meter works correctly. Hoosick, Usick. And there's the Hoosick River. They named the river after a gentleman who was seasick. And they couldn't get him to stop throwing up. <laughs> Can I make it around this guy? So anyways, Vermont is our next state, then New Hampshire, then, you guessed it, Maine. And everything kind of blends together now. The scenery is similar. The people are friendly. There's a store right up here on the right. Not the not this who's sick country store, but this one called Big Moose Country Store. It's kind of a tourist trap, so I'm not going to stop right now because I don't have time. But if you ever come through here, that's an interesting place to go. Now they towed it as a Vermont country store, but the funny thing is, is we're still in New York, and Vermont's not until a little ways down this way. So when I was in there the last time, I said something to the guy. I said. Uh, Hey, what's the deal? You, this is in Vermont. And he goes, shh, don't tell anybody. Also, if you want a chair, they have one or two. And that's got to be the state's largest chair right there. Wild. So anyways, uh, <clears throat> I was just going to say, boy, I'll tell you what. This day started out really, really cold. And it was culture shock for me because for the last two weeks I've been down in like the 90 plus degree 8 million percent humidity weather and then I hit like very 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 low humidity and 42 degrees this morning so it was c -c -c cold I put all my layers on that I had I was even thinking about trying to dig out my old dirty long sleeve shirt that I have somewhere buried in my stuff but I decided not to I just put the rain gear on and the uh, thermal still cold still had to stop and warm up for once or twice but we're doing good now it's 62 out temperatures bumping up there's the weather forecast today is supposed to be like the max is 65 so between 60 and 65 the low is 40 and it's great timing to come home today because it was a little rainy up here yesterday and tomorrow is supposed to be a deluge so i'm really looking forward to not having to deal with rain really this trip has been amazing as far as missing storms i only really hit one massive rainstorm on the way up i think that was in the florida georgia area i think it was florida and then um really uh just a few sprinkles here and there but nothing major so that's been cool my bike is so covered with bugs it's wild it's gonna take me like a long time to 
wash this off. Maybe you have to use sandpaper. <laughs> this road right here, uh, it's Vermont, well, it's New York slash Vermont 279, I think. And it's a nice ride. It goes through the mountains. You take 279 up to, uh, I think it's Route 4, Route 7. Yeah, Route 7. And this goes up through really nice uh, scenic ride through the mountains goes up through and pretty much comes out on like 202 and you kind of wiggle that through so welcome to vermont and as they say in vermont find your own business you weirdo now as they say in vermont have some ben and jerry's as they say in vermont don't take a shower as they say in vermont keep it weird and grow facial hair my daughter <laughs> Ah, Vermont, yes. Vermont, when you come to Vermont, you leave feeling better about your family. We're normal. We're not that weird. <laughs> Tourist traps. Everything here. Take my money now. Wilmington, Vermont. Uh, come on. Yes, your old boy. We can do you, Bubby. Get your coffee. Welcome to Cal Hampshire. So we're like the last hour of our journey. And we are still dealing with very nice weather. It's 73 degrees. I feel like a weatherman every time I'm talking, but there's very little humidity. It's just a beautiful, it's very beautiful right now. So this is nice. just thinking about the trip any reflections on it it's been an awesome trip i really enjoyed really all the different parts it feels like there was so many different little parts of it the beginning in the shenandoah going to tennessee seeing my buddy super fun uh key west was cool and camping on big pine key that was kind of a highlight except it was just a little bit over the top hot for me, but that's that's okay. Inside the tent of death, is it so hot? This is my biggest fan. <laughs> if it wasn't for this thing, I totally would die. The problem is, is that the battery hasn't been lasting all night. Without this fan, you literally cannot survive. There will be no survivors. Be no survivor. The ride through Florida was really pretty. So many farms, uh, but again, just a little too hot. <laughs> and then uh, heading back has been pretty fun, although it's been a little bit grueling with the amount of miles I put on. Essentially made it from Tampa at lunchtime to New York in a day and a half and then from there over here so yeah it's it's been a lot of miles we're gonna wait to see the total miles until we get to our home base at Booney's in Maine but I'm excited to see what, what our total is. I've been trying to guess, thinking, I know I'm over four, I, I gotta be over 4,000 miles, have to be over 4,000 miles. So we'll see, we'll see what they say. These tires, I just stopped a little bit ago, got some fuel. These tires still look really good. There's no flat spot on the back, which I kind of thought for sure I would have by now. Um, if it's about 2,000 miles back, I mean, I've beaten the tar out of this tire on the awful roads down south and it's freighted right now freighted and it's working fine by the way there's globe fire suits they make most of the turnout gear for firefighters awesome folks there i've toured the factory before i even have a set of gear from them really awesome stuff interestingly i forgot to mention something um, on this trip i've been looking for Buffalo Trace, 
Lanterns and Eagle Rare. Just because I figured I'd be down closer south to where there's more of it than up north. So I did find Eagle Tra uh, I did find Buffalo Trace, and I got a couple bottles of that in the back saddle bag. But I couldn't find the other two. And yesterday on the road, I got a text message, which I didn't see until late last night. That was from the New Hampshire liquor store. And I had entered a lottery, if you will. You put your name in and say, this is what I'd like to get if you get any. And they get an allocation every year and then they randomly draw people to get a bottle of something. You have to pay for it, obviously, but it's kind of cool. So anyways, I got a text message saying that I got a bottle of Buffalo Trace with my name on it and a bottle of Eagle Rare with my name on it, which is super funny because those... Eagle Rare was really the one I was looking for. I couldn't find it anywhere. I really wanted to get it. I've never tried it. So that was super funny to see that. <laughs> uh, um, in my back, I do have a 1.75 bottle of Buffalo Trace though, which I've actually never seen before. I've only seen the small bottles. So I got that when I was at the store too. Pretty funny, pretty funny. That happened to work out that way. I was thinking about the GS2 and how the GS did on this trip. It really did very well, except for the tire malfunction. This bike has been great, and that's really not the bike's fault. That's the, the tires I had on it. If I would have known those tires were that bad, I would have I would have taken them off before the trip. I wouldn't have bothered with the stress and extra cost of having to deal with it on the road. Um, and I actually usually change my own tires in the garage. I have a manual tire machine, and they're not... Motor, these motor, these tires here on this bike are actually quite easy to change because they're not super low profile and the rims uh, it's a drive shaft it's a single sided swing arm I mean it's the best of everything as far as uh, servicing it yourself so yeah but that's okay I got these tires on it and they've been excellent what's funny is the amount of bikers I see now that I'm up here is the, the further north you came the more bikers I started seeing down in Florida, I, I, for the entire time I was down there, I probably only saw a handful of bikes. People just like to ride up here. I, I think it's because the weather's so nice, the roads are awesome, the scenery's great, and the driving, the drivers are a little less crazy. Uh, down in Florida, I mean, you got, I mean, it's white knuckle the entire time, and it's so hot and gross, and nobody's paying attention, and everybody's driving. 20 over the speed limit so up here is just a thousand times better i don't know how you feel about that if you're down south and you're watching these videos i'd i'd be interested in your opinion on that maybe the bikes just come out in the winter time down there i don't know not sure not sure but anyways yeah this bike also um, one thing i noticed about the gs that i guess i hadn't seen in a while but it doesn't get the greatest gas mileage on the highway when you're keeping up with traffic it likes to be around 55 miles an hour for optimum fuel um, i was noticing my instant fuel readings seem to be in the high 40s cruising around the 55 mile an hour mark but as soon as you get up around 75 which is like the average highway speed down south it, it drops down to like 35 so it's quite a steep drop off but around the 55 mark and city driving i actually could get just over 300 miles out of a tank on the highway it was closer to 220 so it again it was a little bit of a hit but i mean you don't usually drive these bikes for gas mileage it's just thought that was an interesting thing and i probably without all the luggage on this thing it'd be better because it's kind of like uh not exactly aerodynamic right at the moment all right, well, I'm gonna stop talking and I'll click back on in just a second when I get to boonies. It doesn't look like much, but we just crossed over the line into Maine. There's no sign or anything. It'd be nice if they put one out for me, but we made it back to Maine and we're super close to my house. Yes, your bud. This has been a heck of a journey. I've got the stats one click away. The mighty GS adventure made it without a problem. We did it! Woo! Boonies, baby! Boonies!
are you ready? Let's go. Let's see what we got for miles. Let's take a look. What did we do? Holy moly, 4,420 miles and it was 66 hours. Put that in your book. Yes, sir, Bob. Thanks again. It was wicked decent of you to join us for this whole long trip. Please leave a comment. Let us know how you like the videos. Hit the subscribe button. It helps us keep our channel going. And as we always say, ride safe, Bubba.